This week on the Push Rollers Podcast, we have some protein and bakehouse protein bars to try. We also talk about the neurological and physiological effects of long COVID and coming back to fitness. And overcoaching. Jesus is a thing. And in three, two, one. Let's go, Dan. Chest up. Dishwasher tablets. Spinach. Go. <laughs> hey, guys. Welcome to the Push for Legs podcast with myself, Dan Meek. And me, Tom Hall. What's going on, bro? I'm good. I'm just perplexed as to why it's snowing so heavily yet sunny at the same time. Um, as we do this right now it, outside, it's sunny and snowing. Weird. Like, I can't get England, my head around bro. it. Like, England. What are we doing to the country? What are we doing to the world? <laughs> like climate. Do you know what I mean? We're fucking this con- this I keep saying country. country. We're fucking this world up. It's uh we, really well, we, are, have, we? we what we, we opened with it was hotter than Africa last year. Last year? Last week. Um yeah. and yeah, it was good on the weekend and then it's bitterly cold and apparently snowed. Didn't snow that much in London. We got we had a flurry, I believe it's uh, the technical term. Um, but that's about it. Like, oh, this is coming down. I saw your story earlier, and it was coming down. Is it's it worse than that? that now. It's worse yeah. than that now. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's show us on this audio show. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is going on in your world? A lot, mate, you know, just, just cracking on. Got about 20-odd program, gym programs to write in the next five days <laughs> for when the gym's open. But um, other than that, I'm Never. all good. Never um, it's not about those. I, got about, I, I just do it in chunks. I have to do, like, I've got five to do tonight, and then I'll do five tomorrow night, five night after. You know, I can't, can't do all that in one day. That's just going to be too much. <laughs> that would, I would, yeah, I would lose my face if uh, yeah. Yeah, I had to write that many in one hit. But, but, yeah, I mean, that, like, I'm excited right for one. gyms to open. I'm excited for everyone to get back in. It's been nice. I tell you what, it has been nice writing programs for a gym rather than for home. <laughs> That's been a nice luxury. <laughs> Although the novelty did wear off after the first like 15, then it, it wore off. Yeah, then, you know? but, um, but yeah, I'm getting there. We're getting there. Oh, Very excited to get back to the gym oh. and back with proper equipment and all that sort of jazz. I think so. Obviously, think everyone that... is, right? But so this is officially. Fingers crossed, Boris, don't fuck us. The last bunker cast, we'll just call it the bunker cast, um, that we will do, maybe ever, because gyms will be open. Don't say that. I know. What we got? 39, don't say that. I'm still, 40, I'm still convinced. 41. I'm still this convinced we need to get used to this. Bunker cast 42. Mental. <laughs> I'm still convinced we need to get used to this because what I predict is that terrorist groups are going to see how badly everyone handled this and just go, hmm, let's just develop ourselves a virus that can kill people. That's what I reckon is going to happen. <laughs> I mean, it's a bit doom and gloom, isn't it? But, you know. Yeah, I mean, starting off lovely. Well, I had a lovely Easter weekend. Um, <laughs> did lots of walking. We we decided to get the last bits of kind of lockdown walking around London where there's no people. Um, yeah. Because I'm assuming it's 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 kind of... Like the first lockdown, it's, it's a weird thing to say. And I, I almost put a story up on it being like, oh, I'm going to miss lockdown. Like everybody's like, what? Are you, are you serious? <laughs> it's like in a weird way, like the first lockdown, there was nobody on the streets at all. This one's, there's yeah. obviously more and more, but it was like the last time to go to Trafalgar Square and Parliament Square and these places where there's fuck all tourists. When like I put stories of um, we're in Covent Garden up, right? That was Covent the Garden guy. on, on what, a the Saturday guy was- night. That on guy on the on the thing. Yeah, yeah, the thing. Oh my it's god, insane! I can't remember. Crazy. I can't remember what his name was. I can't help Australian. but feel though. I can't I help but feel for for, for that amount of talent. That like, why are you still doing that? Like, surely you should be somewhere else doing this. No, and I'm like, he's doing that. Like, we sat there for a good 25 minutes. Like, what's his show? Like, had a, had a coffee or like a hot chocolate or something. I gave him a tenner. I was just like, I've got to give him something, right? <laughs> I was like, I've just taken it all yeah. in. Like, fuck you, cunts that are just like, oh, I'm not going to give him anything. It's like, I've literally just, I was like, this is basically theatre right now. Like, there's yeah. nothing. That, <laughs> like, we basically, he was doing a little bit of stand up comedy. He was like, he was a funny guy. And he was like, he was on, so people didn't see the story. He was on like a crappy table, like on some cobbles, on lots. And he put, what you know, like he put those bricks in whilst he was on top of that board yeah. on top of a wheel. 
and he yeah. put it, he built the stand himself whilst on top of it, and then he threw knives around and some fire because he was like, ah, knives, fire, ah, what could go wrong? <laughs> he was quite funny, and he was like, this is the best show I've had all year, and there was like 15 of us there <laughs> in the so whole impressive. of Covent Garden. It was insane, yeah. so he was just like, yeah, appreciate you guys, like, really, because it's bit of a struggle for me uh, i was like no shit about <laughs> like a, a street performer where there's nobody on the streets it's quite quite a tough gig yeah. um that is but tough yeah gig, we yeah. did that it was it was it was quite nice just to walk around london when nobody's there um and then yeah. of course it was easter what eggs did you get dan did you get any fun eggs? i got i got a lint bunny um Standard. really annoyingly i got i was supposed to get for myself i got myself an ms egg and it was supposed to have like a crunchy or crispy egg like in the egg not like crispy things on the side of an egg it was supposed to be in the egg didn't have any in stock so they sent me a kit kat chunky one for oh. real substitution which is a bit annoying that was a substitution. Um, wow. yeah so i but I, I haven't eaten that yet and i had i just had loads of mini eggs and lint bunnies they're my thing you see i'm not easter eggs are good i've obviously eaten some of isabel's because she had about six so i was like well, i'm not gonna buy myself one so i've had some <laughs> dairy milk easter eggs which were nice yeah, the eggs always obviously you. good. <laughs> you got a great one. I heard. I heard you got a great one, a stormtrooper one. I heard. Stormtrooper. I was I was Pretty browsing a cardo and I saw the stormtrooper from M and S. Stormtrooper Easter egg. Sent it to Tom's girlfriend. I was like, yeah, get him this. He'll love it. And she was like, oh my god, he will love it. And then apparently, he was very underwhelmed with it and just didn't intend. <laughs> right? Well, it was more excited like whole... about Thomas the Tank Engine one. I got apparently. Thomas the Tank Engine one. Um, I got a one from the Connaught. I got this one, some tempered chocolate. We got some Thorntons. We got some. Have you seen the Thorntons have closed all their shops? Uh, yeah, they've yeah not done well. I mean oh. that that brand was dying for a long time. They went down from over the last like ten years from about two hundred sixty yeah. stores to about sixty stores. So yeah, um, yeah. interesting. They're not staying. They're not just staying online or anything. They are closing, aren't they? Just yeah, they are closing, I believe. Yeah, um, like they, I think they've just got beaten out by Hotel Chocolat. To be fair, I think yeah. those are the guys because Hotel Chocolat end up being in hotels and stuff as well, and restaurants, and they've they've killed it through that. Um, yeah, it's nice. Though, to be fair, it, it is, is nicer. nicer. Yeah, step your game up, <laughs> so, you know what I mean? yeah. Step your game up, Jesus. Um, yeah, so I had I had a lovely Easter. My mum gave me a biscuit for some weird reason as well. Uh, is a, a cookie. biscuit. <laughs> was, she gave me like two Easter eggs and a biscuit. I was like, thanks. I guess it's a tractor. If you like. um, <laughs> very quite strange. Um, yeah, mate. So lovely. And we're back to work. Awful times. Um, I actually took like the Friday off and half of the Monday. So it was quite nice. Um, it was good. And on the eight week supportive, that was my last week with you guys. Sorry. There was some tears. It was uh, oh, joy. They're going to be they're going to be almost PTs by the end of the week, where they have their exams this weekend. Oh Woo! God! Don't fuck up your exams. Don't fuck up your exams. All right. Protein review. Protein bar review. There we go. We had it. I still haven't bothered learning anything on my ukulele. I will. I promise. Uh, you're useless. Um, I am useless. I think I'm going to do some like exercise advice whilst playing the ukulele. Um, because I think that'd be funny. Uh, and it'll be no no just an ukulele happening and people will be like, Oh, you he's in a sing. I'm, like, I'm just gonna kid, tell you to like squat properly and stuff like that. So uh, quite alright. All right. So we're gonna go through the protein bakehouse. They finally arrived. We got one of every single one, didn't we? Uh, we did get one of every single one that was in stock, I believe. I believe they do desserts and we didn't have anything from them. Okay. Desserts. Um, so we had everything from there. So we'll read them out, and uh, we're not going to have all five because you know it's Easter. I got to have some chocolate later, um, and we got to not plow through all these. So we got a lemony dream, um, a chocolate nutter, a bicky scoff, a coco bueno, and a caramelo crumble. They all sound pretty decent, apart from the lemony dream. And because I really apple. Like lemon that's an apple caramel crumble, caramel. That's what I said. No, you said caramel. Make it sounds like caramel and maple crumble. Did I say caramel? I, I thought I said apple. Yes. Anyway, um, caramel crumble. I'm right. <laughs> I think we should go. I think we should go for the bueno and the apple crumble. 
Bueno and Apple, you're taking it away from the Bicky Scoff. Jesus, I think that needs right. to be saved. Uh, oh, I, don't, uh, I don't mind. I don't mind actually. Let's do it. Let's do it because we got we got another week of these, haven't we? So essentially, we have got two weeks worth. Um, so we're gonna go Coco Bueno and Caramapple Crumble, I believe, is what you just said. So I got to find these. Um, problem with wanna... naming it. The problem with naming it things like Coco Coco Bueno. Is that if this doesn't taste like a bueno, I'm going to be disappointed. Yeah, no, you're like. If you just said chocolate hazelnut, I'd have gone, okay, let's try it. <laughs> now I'm All expecting it, it um, to be like a bueno. I do, I do like, in terms of Bakehouse, what Dan ties into it, you've got a little, they, they've obviously, they, they've definitely bought Microsoft Office. Um, so they have a nice published little piece of paper, two A3, not A3, A5s, um, all nicely folded with the. Uh, all the nutritional information on. Lovely job. So, consume within one week for ultimate freshness. Not going to happen. You can microwave if you can microwave them, um, or for a softer bar, eat at room temp. So we got these two, right? What we got? Um, right. They the, look crunchy, don't they? They look like they're yeah, going to they be like crunchy. They're not. They're not. Oh. So the the coco bueno two twenty cows. Um, 18 grams carbs, 20 grams of protein, 7 grams of fat, or about 20 grams of protein. And the carrot maple is 206 calories. Pretty low. They're low on calories, aren't they? Um, yeah. They're not like up there with the protein pantry stuff. 17 grams of carbs, 21-ish. We'll give it 21 grams of protein and uh, 5 to 6 grams of fat. What were what we saying? What did, you, what did you just have? Coco Bueno. Coco Bueno, yeah. Not happy. Well, what's, not your, impressed. What's, what's your not impressed? <laughs> no. Oh, wow. Um. Uh, they they're. It's like the chewy ones from Protein Pantry, right? It's that texture. Okay. But it's not. The flavors are not that strong. It just tastes a bit chocolatey and a bit hazelnutty. But it, it's what disappointed me. I thought it was gonna be a different texture because it looks like a flapjack kind of texture and then you bite yeah. into it and it's just a soft chewy protein bar like the protein pantry ones the thick ones like i the protein pantry ones i love are the cake ones they're the cakey ones they're the ones i like this is a bit of like the softer one it's just really soft isn't it yeah and it's just it doesn't really taste too much again they've killed themselves because they've said bueno on it and it's just not a kinder bueno like which, it's chocolate hazelnut. What, you, you think bueno and we've we've gone through this again and again What's the biggest thing about like that bueno is the the wafer crunch, right? And then you the get crunch, the little gooey yeah. inside, and the cream, and there's no you crunch the, or cream. Yeah, so that's it. It tastes the same, but there's no texture. Interesting. Um, yeah, I feel because because they built it up, I think, and it needed it needed a crispy in there, didn't it? They needed some yeah some of those soy crispies I had from that other bar the other day. Um, yeah, so that wasn't just that not, was not fantastic. Are we go. Have you uh, opened the other one? Not yet. I mean, right. I'm, gosh, I'm going into it disappointed <laughs> straight away. I just you know. I'm going to go for this. It smells good. Uh, Actually, the problem is it looks crunchy. I was really excited looking at them when the pack came. I was like, these are going to be different. They're different. You know, I thought, oh, this is going to be something. And this is uh, just you have to go right know. to the middle of this bar. Okay. I think. It's a pretty big freaking bite, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you. Quite big. Um, I quite like the gooey. Like the actual, there's like what would be apple puree or something underneath the white chocolate stuff. Mm. Is that what's there? I quite like that. But again... Again, I'm I'm expecting crunch or something in there. It just needs a crunch, doesn't it? Like it needs some pops and some rice krispies or something like that. Because it's it's really like it does say that you can have it. Like obviously, put it five ten seconds in a microwave for it to be. That gooey. one is better. That one is better. It, they are gooey. Like anyway, they are really gooey. Mm. I think it's um. Do you know what it is? Ch- chocolate protein stuff is generally quite difficult because it's never that great. So the ch- it's, that's better than chocolate one. 
But like you say, it still needs some crunch in there. It does need a crunch, doesn't it? Like the fact that you can get soya krispies. Yeah. Just put them in. They're high protein. Put them in. <laughs> I don't, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd, that'd be a no brainer for me. Like the soya krispies mm. that I had in that vegan bar. And I was like, it's actually an all right bar. <laughs> and it was only 190 mm. calories. Um, yeah. They're, they're in, basically, if anybody wants to buy them, they're incredibly soft flapjacks. I think that's an accurate description, but not even flapjacky, <sighs> but they're incredibly no. soft flapjacks. Very, very soft not, and gooey. They, they almost need to be cooked more. They're not as chewy as, you know, like the protein punch ones that are chewy. They're not as yeah. chewy as that. They, they break down a bit quicker, but I personally, wouldn't buy them again. Yeah. Just throwing out fantastic. There. Yeah. I feel sorry, like protein definitely. Yeah. I paid Good. for them. I'm not saying sorry. I paid for them. Actually, <laughs> I'm not saying sorry. I paid for them. We didn't, we didn't get um, these for free. Um, yeah. So yeah. All right. All right. But, Still Don't, better. Like, again, like just remember, like disclaimer, better than like you know carb killers and stuff. Better, like we're not, yeah. we're not, we're not saying they're really bad. They're just not birthday cake protein pantry bars, right? Yeah, which that's the standard. Yeah, birthday cake um, protein pantry is like out of it's, it's literally a birthday ridiculous. cake. It's, it's so like, just like a birthday. <laughs> cake. Um, but it is that carom- that apple crumble one is better than. The, the chewy, like the double chocolate, white chocolate chunk we had from Protein Pantry, for example. I'd probably put that ahead of it. Yeah. But I wouldn't buy those over the Protein Pantry cake varieties, like the Cherry Bakewell, the Birthday I, Cake. There I, was just I still, I don't know if it's a, 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 a reminiscent thing, a nostalgic thing. I still love the caramel and crunch from that place. No, and uh, sorry, yeah, the crunch as well. The crunch <laughs> the hazelnut cream, caramel and crunch. Yeah, you're right. They, they, those, those as well. Like, yeah, the texture's big, bro. Just but, don't put bueno on your bar because it's just setting yourself up. For yeah, you're man. setting yourself up. You want a kinder bueno. Fair failure. I like. And you've and got you... a biscoffy one as well. So, I mean, good luck Man, that next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. That's going to be fun. I've got, um, yeah, so. Mm, yeah, wouldn't purchase again, but they're good. So I think we'll give them a seven. Yeah, yeah, seven. Seven, seven, seven seven's out of ten, that's fine, but lovely. Um, anyway, I've got Biscoff sauce, a massive bowl oh, of shit. Biscoff sauce. You know, you get the spread, this is the sauce. Like, imagine is it, like, what is it? Is it more viscous? Is it more viscous? Yeah. Imagine less stuff, viscous, like the stuff that you put, like, where you know, the big ice creams that you get, and the, the stuff yeah. that's inside that. I think it's that so good. I, I. Literally, yeah. when I got, when I when I got I got given it basically because somebody made um, a, it's less uh, viscous. It's less viscous than less viscous. Than less viscosity. Yeah. yeah, less viscosity. So somebody somebody made a biscoff cheesecake and had it left over, and they're like, "Well, I'm not leaving this. I'll give it to Tom because apparently I'm known for liking biscoff." And they're like, "There you go." And I was like, "Fuck me!" Like the thing's like over a tenner. It's like it's big. I, thing. I'm just thinking now. I might actually buy some because I'm just in my head thinking that must be great on yogurt. Oh yeah, but I haven't tried it on yogurt. I did. Can you imagine <laughs> I, that, like, imagine getting like any... a yogurt and apple, like I have, and uh, then just being like that. Ah. Boom. Oh, I had, that was I, so good. Basically, all I had was in terms of treats, and I was like craving something kind of sweet. Um, all I had was like, some, not this is bad. Uh, Chloe likes having digestive biscuits, and I was like, these are boring. I was like, I could just put the biscoff sauce on the digestive. Lovely. Made myself a little yeah. Biscoff digestive. It was because digestives are shit. No one would ever get digestive. <laughs> one would make a Biscoff. Yeah. She likes them for breakfast. Weird. Um, oh my god, that's annoying. I can I can only order a minimum of two bottles of this stuff. Wow. I can't order just one. How annoying. That's annoying. You want one? Oh anyway. well, I've got to get two now. Never mind. <laughs> Mate, summer's shame. come in. You're going to be ice cream parties outside with uh, of, Isabel. What about a box of forty-eight cream eggs? Um, yeah, wow. I bought those. Of course you did. <laughs> you would. That's you all over that, innit? Biscoff, I got, uh, those sauces. I got a box of 48 cream eggs to take back to work for next week. Okay. Everybody <laughs> to have cream eggs. First come, first go. Oh, that's a nice crazy. person. Um, all right, mate. We're going to move on to fitness-ish advice. Biscoff um, is fitness. Shut up. Fucking hell. <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to vaguely talk about... We've got two main subjects to talk about. Um, we're going to be slightly brief, but I guess I, oh, Dan can give me his, his, his 50 pence. Um, two cents, isn't that the phrase? 
50 pounds Tuppence. two cents tuppence he can give me a quid's worth if he really wants to if he wants to go the whole hog on um, long covid so i was in a little uh, webinar i believe this morning um i can't remember the name of the people um for the life of me the 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 doctor of physiology was called joseph no carl who was called carl um and then <laughs> i was clearly paying attention um yeah. but they were talking about so one thing cracking business because uh, they've jumped on this as quick as possible um and i was like jesus how they thought about that quickly and even though the, but i i think from a moral standpoint i wouldn't be able to do it um so they've jumped on instructing a certification as it were and um guidance for trainers health professionals like ourselves um to cope and be instructed about clients that possibly may have had covid and are wanting to come back to the gym and train and maybe kind of suffering from long covid which i think everybody's kind of seen in the news right so long covid mm. um so generally the like so the the skepticism me skepticism no um that i went in with it was like all right i see i feel like this is a quick buck that they're trying to make as soon as mm. someone like kind of mentions certifications and stuff like that and i'm like oh do you have an awarding body behind you do you basically for somebody to have a certification i feel like they need to have the government one as well mm. um so they've got that guidance through so i'm like oh is it just a bullshit certification that you're making up so i'm a suddenly a qualified person but okay i was like all right we'll give them the benefit of that um also this is so new that I doubt there's research on it. So it can't be guided by research or peer reviewed research. Um, Cause all the data is so new, you kind of, it will be changing and evolving all the way. So, but from an interest point of view, I thought it was a good thing to sit in on and I will endeavor to sit through a few, I've got three months worth of kind of looking at their stuff. Um, and we'll have a look and see what advice for people who will be suffering from long COVID. So what it seems like, I think some of the football players, particularly in Newcastle, so remember St. Maximan and some of these guys, they, they're not like back to full fitness, they're kind of their, their levels of fitness they were before they contracted COVID. So that, that is what they would deem like a long COVID. So they've had a sustainable fatigue, I believe they uh, use that word, um, from having covid they they have no symptoms they have no nothing but they're kind of neurologically and physiologically impaired from having covid and obviously such a, a disease that we've got is just like all right well we don't really know how long it will go on we don't know how hard to press them in terms of will they get it back straight away will they able to it's like a push hard like get there or do we go too hard too soon is the danger um so they were discussing a few people that, that kind of went too hard too soon and relapsed and back into hospital um and kind of because they couldn't keep up with the neuro neurological adaptations they were trying to enforce themselves through training so which is an interesting thing i was like i didn't think that would happen but you just felt like you'd been hit by a, a truck or something like that so it's interesting i'd love to hear daniel's thoughts and i don't have any i i don't know I, I lie i do have one client who did have covid pretty bad and was bedridden for two weeks um but i did train him post and i did taper it back quite a lot and injuries that he had maybe previous to training with me about four years prior kind of resurfaced stuff that we'd done strength work to get rid of and blah, 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 all this kind of resurfaced. And suddenly the knee was an issue and suddenly the knee flexion stuff was an issue again. And he seemed to have a little bit more bursa trouble than I thought he would coming back. And I was like, I thought we sorted this kind of stuff. I was like, I'm pretty confident in my ability to be able to train this person. So I, I feel like I've seen it. And then, but just like, I'm not blowing my own trumpet, but, just by common sense, I feel like I tapered back and I just went back to kind of prehabby, rehabby movements and going, all right, this person needs this, 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 because I've already gone through that phase before. So what was interesting for me was they were talking about tests and reassessment and probably what is a good thing for everybody after a certain amount of what is deconditioning is reassessment. I think Daniel would agree that 
when the football players come back after holidays, what do we do? Test week. Like, we're like, all right, we're going to discuss your levels so we can kind of see where they're at. My advice, probably in the first two weeks of getting your clients who are probably going to be slightly deconditioned, would be maybe you put them through some sort of relative to them, relative to you and your data testing protocols whatever they may be. So I, I use like goblet squats at something of their body weight for however many reps they can do stuff that's safe. I'll be like, all right, Dan weighs 75 kilos. He's in a goblet squat, 25 kilos as many times as possible. Off you go. Um, which are three or four, maybe for Daniel. So, but yeah, if you like <laughs> so it'd be interesting to hear your thoughts. Cause I think there's like, I'm always, I'm looking like, will their CV system be fucked? Will their anaerobic system be fucked? Will that system be fucked? Will neurological be a strength system, really? I'm like, ooh, there's a lot of kind of things in the air, but do I just look at it for they've had an extended period off and being deconditioned and I treat them like that? You then? I think it's just a... Uh... I'd imagine it's just a stressor to the body. It's obviously still dealing with it. And that's the way you should approach it with, <coughs> excuse me, dieting, training, whatever. It would be an added stressor and arguably one that's probably, you know, if someone's got capacity to deal with 100% stress on any, not any given day, they're at 30%. If this, if this issue causes them to constantly be at say 60, 70%, they just don't have much wiggle room for you to be able to then add training, nutrition, dieting, stress, whatever it is to that as well and obviously they're you know more like you said about the previous injuries maybe they've become more sensitive yeah. to to pain uh, or previous you know issues um and that could be related to to stress could be related to cortisol could be related to all those sorts of things um but it just makes sense right like, like you yeah. said it's common sense whether you call it long covid or massively deconditioned you listen to that's where you listen to to your client you listen to what they're going through what you know, how they're feeling and if you've got a client who's previously had rehab for an injury and they come back to train with you and they go, Oh, it's starting to hurt again. You don't go, Oh, we'll plow on anyway. You go, no, we'll go back to what we're doing. Um, so yeah, it seems that, you know, it's just log logic for any good trainers out there, but I suppose there's not many good trainers out there. So probably <laughs> so why they need a certification. On it. Yeah. Um, so it seemed to be like there was a neurological, um, like a deficit that was happening and like a physiological one in terms of maybe CV systems because it's a respiratory disease, right? So one would assume their respiratory system would be fucked and slightly down. Um, so they kept on going on about a rock port test, um, which I have never done. Daniel, have you done the rock port one mile walking oh, test? The rock port one mile walking test. Um, it is as far as you can fucking go in a mile, walking only. Heart rate monitor <laughs> on, see what kind of zones you hit, but walking only. Um, not too sure what you're going to be doing, to be honest. Um, so yeah, however, like, however quick you do it. So I just went on Google, always a, a trusted element of it. Um, at what pace should the one mile walk test be performed? So excellent for a 20 to 29 year old. I believe that is 13 minutes, 12 seconds under i have no idea i might do this fuck it maybe we should uh, do it yeah yeah <laughs> see see what my respiratory system is um i'm not going to do that with one of my clients in a session um probably not, not yeah imagine I'm, that what are we gonna do say let's go walk a mile <laughs> like i'm not saying that testing is a waste of time but some testing might be a waste of time in your time yeah um like obviously the goblet assessments or stuff like the relative strength assessments and body weight strength assessments, all lovely or, or like 30 second max efforts and that kind of stuff is perfectly valid to do as far as I'm concerned, or you mm. try and stay at, I would, I would probably do like a, 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 a dumb down FTP test or a, a, a ramp test or something like that. Um, more might be more beneficial in a uh for a client and in a session but i probably wouldn't make them walk for between 15 probably about 15 minutes um so yeah interesting but i thought it was it's an interesting topic and i think it will be something that i'm, I'm sure some certifications and some things that crop up and it will be a question i'm sure the amount of people who have had covid and they're coming back to train it'll be something that will be in their mind especially the people who've had this long covid thing um so i will endeavor to tell people 
what I think. And as I go through a few more of their lectures and see what they're talking about, I can only assume that there'll be a stuff by lab testing that I'd love to see. Um, mm. Probably their lactate levels would be an interesting thing to see based off some of the exercises. So if we could do bloods, it would be a great thing, but that's obviously specialist stuff. Um, I would just um, look, I'd like to see their respiratory. What's the one of those things? <sighs> We do that. Douglas bag. <sighs> like that. Douglas bag things. Yeah. Mm. I'd like to see that um, over time, especially with breathing mechanics. That'd be interesting to see. And then, yeah, stuff like rock ports or like aerobic fitness will be interesting to see for respiratory disease, as it were. Um, so, yeah. Interesting, Daniel. Interesting. It's a new thing that we haven't really had to cover before. And it's something that I've never actually had to think about. I've been like, yeah, yeah, um, maybe this person. But yeah, I think most good trainers would be like, I'm just going to dial it back and steady as she goes. Like, don't push them too hard because it's brand new stuff. It's like, all right, we're going to be safety, safety, safety. Doesn't just say that for the client. You're like, you've had a fucking disease that didn't exist two years ago. Like, Jesus Christ, shut up. (laughs) We're just going to try and do this like, properly and not fuck you up because you could be re-hospitalized or something like that and probably have we don't know what will happen um anyway all right our next topic within coaching is um yeah coaching over coaching dan got annoyed what was the clip what was oh, the clip fuck you, <laughs> like i follow this i follow dr john rusin i know i it really annoys me he probably, he probably I, listens I, <laughs> I I actually kind of uh, talked about him in a, a class yesterday and was like, oh, this would be this guy would be a good thing for relative strength assessments. He does some he does some cool stuff, but also does some whack. Yeah, no, stuff. don't get me wrong. Like some of his stuff is is cool and it's fine and, and it's all good. I've got no problems with the stuff necessarily. Yeah, it's just the way that like the videos are. It's like <laughs> he's got he, he's he's got like his mates with him or his missus or whoever is training him. And they're doing like a, a, an exercise demo of, of an exercise, right? And I hope to God he's not he's not videoing his actual program because if he is, he does something different all the fucking time. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. I assume not. I assume <laughs> it's just a clip of certain things. But yeah. they're always like, yeah, good, chest up, driving knees out. And it always like every rep, they say something. And it just annoys me because I'm like, at no point when I was coaching someone did I ever, ever say something every single rep. And then the other one they do, when they don't have anything good to say about form, they just go, one, two, three. I'm like, okay, just tell them, you count in your head, and when they're done, tell them they're done. If that's the... But it's just like, yeah, like, hang on, let me see if I can get one up. Hang on. Let's go. Come on. Good. Just always saying something, like every rep, like every time someone does something. Yeah, I don't have to count the reps because that is a rep. You can you can tell when they are <laughs> ridiculous. It annoys me. Like, and you post it on Instagram. It's just like just turn the sound off. Just turn the sound off. <laughs> get get rid of the audio. Get rid of the audio. Yeah, because yeah. that that was basically if anybody was lost from the uh, intro, that's what I was saying to Dan. Um, I was like, I was waiting for him just to start listing his uh, his shopping and be like. What, what do you, you end up end up saying bullshit because everybody does it in group X classes. They're funny because you end up saying some weird stuff and you're like, what am I even saying? Like if, once you've said brace your core and brace your abs and squeeze your glutes, there's not much else to say in a group X class, it seems. Um, and then they're like, yeah, yeah, keep going, guys. Work it. Oh, yeah. Come on. All right. Let's go. And you're like, all right, well, we are going. That's, I get it. But it's it's motivational within within a degree. But yeah. It's interesting, isn't it, mate? Like, what would what would you? I'm gonna I'm gonna pause here because Daniel's decided to turn his mic off. But yeah, <laughs> three, two, one. We're back in the room because Daniel decided to turn his mic back on. Um, <laughs> Dan's got some Literally silly headphones, basically. Um, that whenever he moves the uh, microphone, he looks like he's on a basically. You're <laughs> you're like uh, we're gonna sell some stuff to you today. Oh, is that okay? He basically yeah, yeah, sells stuff today. But a sales <laughs> he's ba- have you ever seen? I'm doing sales. A phone jacker or something like that. Um, so definitely buy some shares with Dan. Whatever he tells you, I'm sure he's calling some people up. Um, <sighs> yeah, get some get a different mic. Fuck now. 
but your quality is good. Sorry. But yeah, um, <laughs> it's, it's it's yeah. It just it just it was, I was just looking at it and it just annoyed me. I was just coming across the videos and the sound was on. I was just like, shut up! Like she's <laughs> doing like a belted squat. Like you don't need yeah, yeah. form tips on a belted squat. It's pretty straightforward. It, drive through the drive through the heels. Push the knees out. Chest up. It's like she knows she's doing it fine. She doesn't need you don't need to tell her. It's not like she was crouched over pushing through her toes. Like she was doing yeah. all the stuff you were telling her. She was doing. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's there's something that we we teach. We're like, all right. Well, if we if don't say anything, if the, I'm like, I always say, if I'm not saying anything, it's a good thing. Like that means you're doing it correctly. Carry on as you were. Like no news is good news, kind of thing. Um, and then there's also a coaching technique, Dan. I'm sure you've said this. Is is too much information is probably not a good thing for a client, yeah. and we probably need to have like nuggets of information, um, especially during a set because they're fucking or a focus of each set. Else. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we we talk about a focus of each set. We're like, all right, for this set, I want you to really think about this because that's the biggest issue, and the rest of the shit we can sort out later, and it's not going to kill you. We talk, we just figure out the stuff that was yeah. going to kill you. And then we do it. And we, I think we're quite similar in the fact if they're not going to die during that set, I'll let them mostly carry on unless it looks like absolute shit. Um, yeah. I'll probably carry on and be like, what did you think about that set? Like, did it feel like what was happening? Or I might take the piss out of them and be like, what the fuck was that? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did I, did I do that? No. All right. Okay. Well, let's watch me again. Um, which is, which is fine. Get to know the client first. Don't do that in your first session. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a case of like drip feeding information as well. Um, obviously, that was a, a video on Instagram, but I still think like he probably does coach like that. Maybe. Yeah, probably. Because um, and- I think that's the kind of thing you just do naturally, instinctively. Like, yeah, he's not I doing think that so as well. To try and be like, like it's every exercise in every set. It's not like a one off. It wasn't like just that exercise. It's just all that all the time. And again, I hate the counting reps. If you're a, again, if you're a PT, right, and you count your reps out loud, or whatever, that's fine. If you've done that up to this point, if you didn't know any better, but from now on, please stop. <laughs> because that's all some people think PTs do. Yeah. Because you just count reps. Because so they think, oh, I don't need someone to stand there and count reps for me. That's what you're doing. You're reinforcing that stereotype by counting reps out loud. You can tell the client, right, three left, two, one. I'm okay with that. Yep. You don't need to count them all out, but you should know in your head what number they're on and where they're at and telling them when to stop, how many they've got left, et cetera, et cetera. And, and they can like... count to 10 themselves. If you really want to. <laughs> and counting down or something like, like if they're doing it for time, 10, nine, nine, yeah, nine, fuck nine. Off. Eight, 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 Just eight. say three, not, two, one. Three. They're not launching like, off. Like we don't oh, need, there's not just... that much preparation. Yeah. I, I literally say, I was like, you will count if it's hard enough. I refuse to count for you. I've got other stuff to do. Um, yeah, I and I be... used to and I used to just say to people, I used to say, I'll tell you when you're done. And it used to be when they'd finish that rep, <laughs> I'd go, done. done. I didn't even yeah. need to do two one, I'd be like, done. Uh, and they'd be like, Oh, thank God for that. Do you know? <laughs> there is that element to it where the second you tell tell someone they've got two left or three left, they just stop thinking and they just just yeah. do whatever. And they don't actually engage their brain because they just want to get to the end of it. Um so it's not done for like no reason. It's done for a reason that if you start counting down, you know, anyone listening to this knows that when you start counting down or you get closer to the end, you just kind of go oh, near the end. Now. Yeah, everyone does yeah. it. So it's best to not know when you're near the end. <laughs> Granted, your client sometimes counts because they want to get to the end and that's fine. Correct. That's fine. If they count, like that's one less job for you. Yeah. But oh, please don't so. reinforce a stereotype that PTs <laughs> just stand there and count reps. And then it's a case of like, all right, if, if, you don't you know it's not to say if you haven't got anything constructive to say don't say it at all but that's just that was borderline ridiculous saying something different every single repetition would confuse me when i'm when i'm training something like with someone as well i'd be like what I, you and, and told the other me argument up, there, the other, out, argument there is, the other argument there is that they with the people that they're doing it with on those videos they are of a high enough training age to know all that <laughs> yeah. they don't need to be told that like you don't need she was doing like i said she was doing all the stuff I, I could understand it a little bit more still think it's not the right thing to do if she had really poor form but like you said then you'd go to at the end of the set during a rest and go it's on the next set what I want you to do <laughs> is try keeping your chest up and push your knees out that's all i want you to think about just keep chest up knees out one upper body one lower body cue that's it right yeah. and we'll go into the next set but like the fact is that she was keeping her chest up her knees were pushed out and she was driving through her heels it's like what mm. are you saying these things for just shut up like it just annoyed me <laughs> really annoyed so me. yeah over over coaching is a syndrome kind of thing and you'll you'll know the coaches that do it and they just don't shut up or they'll be speaking to their client 24 7 and it does lend itself 
well to group X because they kind of they don't like silence is a thing, but from a few coaches as well, they don't like that. Oh, this is awkward, and you're like awkwardness is fantastic. Some of the most hilarious things happen out of awkwardness. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but the, the one thing I would say as well is that if you, the more you talk, the less likely they are to hear you when you do say something useful. Yeah. Like, I can't stress that enough. Like, they're, they're not selective. They'll just drown you out if you just say shit like that all the time. I mean, during a set, especially. They're not going to listen. They're gonna, they just heard all the same things. Whereas if you're very selective of what you say, they, people, your client will listen. Because they'll be like, oh, he doesn't say much usually. If someone he does, I better fucking make sure I do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think my clients would, would concur with that. I, I'm quite quiet when during sets and stuff. And um, because I like I like walking around my client for and just looking what they're doing and being like, all right, I'm gonna change and just have a little tip. Admiring sheet in my head. your work, Tom. Just I'm admiring just like, your oh, work. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that looks great. Um I just have a little tip like a tick list. Obviously, I know their issues and I'll be like, all right, what do we think? They'd be like, before the set, what did we talk about? Maybe this before, maybe, do you remember to do this? Did you remember to do that? Blah, blah, blah. Remember this. And off you go. Those are your cues before. Hopefully, she probably was was told before the exercise by John to be like, remember, knees out, chest up, drive through that bit, drive through your heel, crack on. And be like, oh, this is all brand new information during the set. Why are you giving me it now? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, wait, wait a minute. But there's also like stuff that will just from a perspective, as a coaching perspective, they're all shit cues. They were all internal, which is fine because she was kind of an a like an athlete more than like, and she could move. But there was no external cue in there, was there? There wasn't like chest up to like. Drive that chest, chest to the wall. Yeah. yeah, throw that. Drive that backwards. Hit. You see that bar in front of you on that and those knees to be outside of that bit. Like that's gold. Like that should work for anybody. It's like eighty percent more retention of actual learn of a learned skill and learned movement. Whereas internal cue, and so an internal cue is something that you just go towards yourself, right? So I'd be like, all right, Dan, I want you to slightly move your elbow towards your sternum. You'll be like, you know what that means, and it means a lot to you. And but that's a shit cue, fucking nothing. It'd be like, all right, Dan, I want you to blast your elbow to right towards your uh, your Nike tick, please. Awesome, you know, that'd be great. Um, so it's it's elaborating that kind of stuff. So I we we like those. We like external external stuff. Use your surroundings and environment as well. I think that's that's gold for me in terms of coaching. Mm-hmm coaching queuing so don't overcoach but don't undercoach as well don't be like oh that looks like shit i'm not saying anything um have to yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's good luck, that feel just, like that? just just sit there and go good luck with that <laughs> <laughs> do this see you later um yeah that's what i do lovely mate all right um any other business we gonna, anything else you got anything? no lovely not Wonderful. from me not from you all right um hopefully i guess we just have to cover um Going back to the gym. Go listen to one of the other shows we did previously. Yeah. Um, <laughs> don't be a twat. Don't go hard or go home. Um, don't be a hero in the first two weeks. You're not going to set any PRs. Um, and yeah, go do some basic fucking shit. Cool? Easy. I think that rounds it out. Easy. Um, right. No other business from me, I believe. And my eight-week group are done. So good luck if you're listening to this show. I expect all of you, all 30 of you, will be are we looking to see if you've listened to this show? Um, I won't. Hopefully they'll pass. We want 100% success rate from level two onto level three, of course. So they can all pay us more money to do the PT core course. That's what we want, isn't it, Daniel? No, they, don't learn. they get that anyway because they're the first cohort through. Lucky buggers. Um, yeah, lovely. So that'll be interesting. Um, and yeah, apart from that, my protein group doing well. Lovely. It's good to hear. Good to hear, isn't it? Um, thanks for listening, guys. And we will catch you next week. See you later.